Okay, welcome back. There were a couple of things to fix on the last video, but the machine is now capable of loading and running programs. There's no input or output yet, but I thought I'd show some programming examples, partly to show what it can do, but mainly to confirm it really does work. I have to excuse the tatty appearance. The front panel will eventually be painted black with etched labels but there's still another hole to be cut for the operator's console, so I'll leave the finishing touches till then. Now this series is aimed at all levels of experience, so I'll quickly explain the notation commonly used in computer programming at this machine code level, called hexadecimal, or hex. So if you already know about this, just skip to the next video. As you can see from the front panel, all registers are displayed in binary. So you may be asking, why not just use ones and noughts for notation? Well, long lists of ones and noughts are very unwieldy to write down. And they're also difficult to manipulate in your head. Now we can make it more manageable by dividing the bits into groups. You probably already know that groups of eight bits are called bytes, but these are still too unwieldy. So we'll divide it into even smaller chunks 4 bits or nibbles. So how does this help? And we can use the machine to illustrate this. There just happens to be a switch for setting registers to zero, this reset button, and another for incrementing or decrementing one of the registers, this ink PC and deck PC. And this is the register PC, program counter, so we can use these switches to directly count in binary without getting bogged down in programming. So we start with the register at zero and if we increment PC we go to number one. Increment again. So this is how two, the number two, is represented in binary. Three are these two bits. Four is the next bit. Five six, seven, and eight. So these bits represent ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteen, and so on. They double each time. So if we go back to zero, and we'll see how many values we can store in four bits. We've got naught, that's one value, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and the next one goes over to the next bit, and the four bits go back to zero. So we can store 16 different values within four bits. Now our day-to-day -day decimal system uses 10 different values, and we use the 10 characters 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., up to 9, to represent them. Now with hex we need 16 characters, so what should we use? Now the convention is to use the characters 0 to 9 for the first 10 values and then switch to letters A to F for the remaining 6 values. So if we reset and start again, this is 0, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and now we run out of numbers, so we go to letters. This is A, it's B, C, D, E, and F. So any binary value can be split into groups of four bits, and each group can be described with a single hex digit. So take this value on this register here. I don't know if you can see the vertical lines between every four bits. Those four, that's an eight. This is a seven. This is a B. And this is six. So the hex value for this register is eight, seven, B, six. So just those four digits is enough to describe this register as opposed to one naught, 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 one, 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 naught, one, one, naught, one, one, naught. So far more convenient. 
Okay, so that was a quick run through hexadecimal. We're now ready to look at machine code programming. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.